Hi, good morning. It's Julia from Crosspatch here. Just checking that the video is actually working. This morning, I want to introduce you to the new Super Big Boy templates um, and to the little bag that we're going to make to keep them safe. Um, these will be on Create and Craft next weekend. So we have amalgamated what was originally a, a big boy and originally the little set of nesting templates into the super big boy set so you've now got six sizes from one and a half inch up to four inches so there's the flower part um, and here's the hexi part um, so originally we had three little nesting templates so it would be the first three sizes of this lot and the first three sizes of that plus the big boy separately now they're all going to come together uh, andy and joe have been working hard to make these for me um, and I hope you like them. So there's other videos available on YouTube on how to actually make the Hexi flowers, but for those of you that haven't seen them, go and have a look at that, but I can show you quickly what you can make with them. This is the teeny tiny size, just to give you a size idea. That's the smallest Hexi flower um, that you can make. Um, and the biggest now, which will be on Crane Craft this weekend, is this size. And we've used some really pretty new fabrics from Bridget Giblin. So they're um, Dutch heritage fabrics, French vintage they're called. So we've got French vintage and French general fabrics will be on the show. So this is using the biggest template um, and just making a, basically a big hexi flower. And I've just put some lace on the back. So I've just quickly done some like slip stitch some lace on the back and it makes it look really cute and pretty and you could make in the patterns with your hexi flowers you'll get patterns to make like these little bags so I've made a little basket here and a little needle book and a cute little pin cushion to go with it and then I made one in French general yesterday so this is using the big four inch flower and then I've just plaited some tape measure tape to make a little handle. They're rather cute. Um, obviously, all the original, like the little bags, you're getting uh, patterns for the little satchels in there. So that's the baby sized one. That's the big, that's the big sized one. And then here inside, there's a medium sized one with some nice art gallery fabrics. Um, just behind me, you can probably just see there's some cushions here, nice French general cushions for your sofa. Um, what else can we make? We can make a nice French general table runner. As I say, look look on my YouTube channel um, and it will tell you how to make all these projects. So today what I wanted to show you is how to make, let's grab this, a bag to keep your templates in. So there'll be a pattern available separately for this. Um, let's undo the sides and I'll show you. So this size, this is the biggest size. In the pattern, you'll get a template, which I'll show you in a minute, which is bigger than the biggest hexi flower template for cutting your fabric out. So if I open it out, you can see I've got my flowers one side and my hexagons the other. Um, and then I've used a hexi flower template for the applique. So I've got like an applique flower that side because that's where my flower templates are going and a hexagon that side. I don't know if you can see the gorgeous Valdani thread I've used for stitching it. I'll hold it a bit closer. And then I had some random hexi flower samples that I'd made up for a show and I've put them on the front and back. So in your pattern, you'll get a big template so you can use that as a pattern piece for cutting the fabric out. And for those of you, if you haven't got hexi flower templates and you want to make one of these bags, there's also the templates for the hexi and the flower that I used for the applique. Um, you can also, if you've got the templates, you can make smaller ones. So here's a Diddy one I made. So if you've got the original set, which is just three little nesting hexi flower templates, you can make one this size and then put your templates on the inside of that. So I'm going to move them out of the way a minute and just show you when you get your kit. Now I've run out of the fabric. I've done kits for the button fabric and for the French general fabric. And I've literally cut every single bit of the fabric up. So when you get your kit, you'll get two pieces of fabric. And for the sample here, I've just used some Dutch heritage fabric. So that's the 
outside fabric and that's going to be the inside fabric um, about 12 inches of fabric when you get your fabric leave them together like that when you're cutting out make sure you start cut from the selvage end first so if you grab um, if you're cutting out let me say that's your pattern there your pattern's obviously bigger than this big template but just as a sample I'll show you put your big template on the selvage end when you're cutting out because it means that you've got your folded end for the fabric so you've got enough because you're going to cut out your pocket and your handles from this and the stuff you've got left over you can leave for fussy cutting your buttons so always start by cutting fabric from that selvage edge first okay so you'll get your fabric so your next job to do let's grab these from over here your next job to do will be get some bosel and cut your flower a template from your pattern out of the bosel and fuse it to the main fabric so this is going to be my main fabric so that's number one number two once you've done that I'm going to just take the pins out of this so you fused it to the fabric and then cut it out and then allow yourself a good quarter of an inch all the way around the outside then make up your pattern, um, make up your pattern, make up your pocket um, and put the tape on your pocket and then you're going to put it onto a 12 inch square of fabric which is going to be the lining and you're going to need to cut a little slit in there because that's how you're going to turn um, each bag piece inside out as it were. Now that is why we've got an applique on the inside of the bag because your applique, your felt applique is going to hide that slit. So if you put that like that, make sure these two bits are going to be the bottom of your bag. Put them right sides together on top, making sure that the slit is positioned in your lining so that you can cover it with the applique and pin them on. So let's roughly just, I'm just going to shove a couple of pins in there just to show you. Now when you stitch this together, you're going to stitch just to the edge of the bosel all the way around. Just you can catch, doesn't matter if you catch the bosel a bit, but you don't want to stitch on the bosel because then you're going to have a double layer of bosel and there'll be a big knobbly bit on your bag. So you're just going to stitch all the way around, just catching the edge of the bosel. So let's chuck that over there. And when you've done that, trim it. So I don't know if you can see where I've stitched it on there, but I've just sort of caught the edges of the bosel. And then I've gone around with a pair of scissors and carefully just snip in these folded areas. And there you can see the slit in the back. So that's where you turn it inside out. And when you've turned it inside out, you're going to end up, oopsie, with a piece like this, which has got all my bits in the pocket at the moment. So you can see you've turned it inside out give it a good press if you want now you can go and top stitch around the edges if you want but be careful when you get down to the pocket area if you're top stitching try not to catch the pocket area because you want your templates to sit right in the bottom of your pocket um, you have a hexagon and a flower template fuse them to some heat and bond and then they are going to cover over the slit see there <laughs> right for while i've got this here let's get this out let's just show you when you've finished it you're going to make some self cover buttons all you do is you can fussy cut a bit of your your main fabric you cut a circle about half an inch bigger than your button and then you gather it around the edge then i leave the thread when i've gathered it i pull it up i leave the thread on and i get the backing so the backing, you want to have the knobbly side it goes down on the back on, of your button. It's going to go there. So I pull the, fab, the thread through the middle of that and then I push that down onto the back of the button. And then I leave that thread on because then it's ready to stitch onto your bag when you've finished. OK, to join, you're going to make two of these. Now to join them, you'll make a little tab for the bottom, which is like about four inches by two inches and put a bit of um, wadding like H613 there. 
and you're going to put that on the bottom there. Now you can't stitch across the top because then you're going to stop your templates going down to the bottom of your bag. So what you do is pin that in place and then you just follow the shape of the bottom of your bag and stitch it around, just right around the edge. So if I get one that I've finished and I can show you, I've stitched, you can see I've stitched it round there and then just go in with some hand thread and just slip stitch that bit down to hold it in place. Okay, so that's the inside of this one. I put some lace on there and I've just put two hexagons on there because I was doing it in a rush. It's like make me in an hour kind of bag this one. It's a bit rough. Uh, as you can see, when you put the handles on, I'll show you how to make the handles now. That's where I put the buttons on top. And then you put some bits of tape on the side, some tape measure tape, just so you can tie your bag up and hold your templates safely in there. Um, to make your handles, you'll have plenty of fabric left over. You're going to cut some four by 12 inch strips and fold them in half and you're going to put some H630 on one side like so and I've stitched all around and there's like a little gap in the middle there for turning so stitch that all around and then turn it right sides out I always say in the destruction slip stitch this gap closed and I never do you're then going to fold this in half again and then put a pin three inches from each end and then top stitch along this edge here. There's a separate YouTube uh, video for making bag handles, so making them this way if you want to have a look at that as well. When you've done that, you've top stitched it there and you've got your bag handle and that will just sit on the front of your bag. Let's grab the bag like so. And then you put your, you'll put you top stitch that on top of the bag and then just put the buttons on top of it. So that's how you make your bag. This is a slightly smaller one. I think it's a bit bigger than that and a bit smaller than the other. So this this size, again, would just do the smaller nesting ones. I wonder if it'll get big boy in there. Let's have a look here. Yeah. I can put my big boy in that one, see? That one will fit a big boy template in. So if you've got the little... Uh, the nesting ones and the big boys and you don't you don't want to get the, this new set you could make this size for the big boy so to make this size i just use the four inch in the new set and put my big boy in there and that's the next size down again for my little ones um that's it really today um thanks for watching i'm off for a jog around the block um now, just to show you, I'm praying that every don't break the templates when I post them after the show. I've got these humongous boxes to put them in and they're pretty, pretty solid. So if you get them, they'll come in these nice big boxes and I'm going to somehow, I'm going to make a cover for mine um, and make it like my special uh, big set of big boys box so I don't know whether to do it like you know like decoupage or something or to make a proper fabric bag but that'll be coming soon anyway so yeah I'm off for a jog before it chucks it down with rain um I'll see you next weekend I'm on create and craft I think Saturday the 25th at I think it's seven and Sunday I think it's eight o'clock or it could be nine o'clock but I'm pretty sure it's eight o'clock they keep changing the time so just have a look at your schedule on TV or on the Create and Craft website. Um, I'll see you soon. Bye.